All right, the Calgary Fitness Podcast. I'm excited for this one, Dr. Michael Schmolke. 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 Yep. Let's just say that first and foremost. Uh, you've been my chiropractor for five years. Absolutely. So, you know, preface that by saying back when I was a hockey referee, I was doing a playoff game, an AJHL playoff game, and what ended up happening was is a player came out of the gate at the same time I was passing by. We oh, had a big yeah. collision, right. landed on my <laughs> hip, I was in the emergency room, so on and so forth, came to see you the next day, and the rest is history. We've been in a relationship for the past five years, so yeah, I just want to start off by saying, you know, who do you help, what's your practice like, where are you located, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, that's a good question, and uh, thanks for remembering that great history, because yeah. sometimes we uh, you lose, lose the details. Um, it's been a pleasure helping you over those yeah. years. Um, so, who do we help, and... How do we help people? Um, very commonly, the scenario that you described is is not unusual. It may not be the ref getting hit by the, the mm. gate of a hockey exiting uh, player on the bench, but an injury, uh, some kind of musculoskeletal situation arises and they, uh, they find themselves in a loss of function mm. and loss of an everyday activity of daily living, mm. functional ability, mm. uh, pain of some kind. Um, now that's not our only type of patient, but that's that's a common scenario and they're coming for a relief uh, Clarity on what it is they've dealt with and chiropractors are well tooled to you know uh, figure those things out uh, We have a very detailed history and experience in and training in that sort of thing so, And the clinic itself doesn't just do chiropractic. Is that right? Absolutely not um, so um, in addition to people who come in with injury pain and that sort of thing we have a lot of people who seek better health. Uh, they wish to function healthier, perform better. Um, maybe their athletes trying to shave off tenths of seconds, mm -hmm. hundreds of seconds, increase ranges of motion, prevent reoccurrence of injury from repetitive use that an injury uh, an athlete has to go through. Mm -hmm. uh, and then of course there's people who are wellness patients. And wellness patients are looking to integrate asset, facets of health and educate themselves in ranges of health approach that may not be their strong suit. Mm -hmm. So that, that's another dimension of patients that we work with. But in our clinic alone, we we uh, serve chiropractic as our, one of the main and staple forms of healthcare, acupuncture mm -hmm. as one of the main and staple forms of healthcare, traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, we provide massage, uh, therapeutic massage therapy. Uh, we do nutritional counseling. We do a lot of lifestyle and health coaching through ongoing workshops and series of educational programs that run year after year after year. Mm -hmm. So we, we offer a lot of uh, tools and uh, expertise. Yeah, and that's, community. yeah, I mean, that's the thing. We're in we're Northwest Calgary, so the Beacon Hill Chiropractic and Massage, so it's right off Sarsi Trail. Um, and one thing that I really like about the clinic is the extracurricular, right? So right. the clinics and things that you do, you know, outside of the time, because, Absolutely. you know, it's hard to, in your sessions, whether it be 15, 30, 60 yeah. minutes, whatever yeah. it is, it's hard to really get that feeling of who these people are. So right. how, how, what kind of, what has the experience been like with the extracurricular stuff? Well, uh, we, we have over time developed and attracted to us a fantastic team. Mm -hmm. um, uh, our, our assistants are educators. Our team is collaborative. So it would be rare if we held a workshop, a seminar, or offer a course or a program that might run quarterly or monthly through the year that doesn't involve multiple uh, professionals sure. that are sharing and having input on this. Sure. Um, and for example, a mind, body, spirit is a theme that we are um, using this year 2020 and nurturing the mind, body, and the spirit. And so we have mindset workshops, preventative health workshops, healthy aging workshops, mm -hmm. nutritional awareness workshops, and each one of these workshops will bring in different experts or professionals from within our team, and on occasion outside of our team, of course, mm -hmm. to add to the credibility and the information that we provide. Okay, that's awesome, that's yeah. good. So it's kind of a, you know, holistic kind of approach. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I think that's important much. to remember, right? And, and provides a lot of value to, to people because it's not necessarily you need just chiropractic or right. just massage or Correct. just nutrition, right? Correct. You need a kind of a all-encompassing approach to it. That's right. Well, that's what we find people are after more. Um, some people truly just want that quick, um, you know, moment of pain relief, but more and more people as society seems to be asking and demanding of it mm -hmm. or asking for more of an integrated approach so 
Um, we love that because we've always espoused that, we've always promoted that, and we've been building this fantastic team around that. Sure. And so we're, we feel we're well tooled to help our community. Cool. Um, we are in the Northwest Calgary, but it's it's actually all of Calgary and even surrounding areas that we have patients that come to us. Oh, great. Uh, from all over, it's, it's quite, quite, um, quite gratifying. And tell me a little bit about your history um, and who you are. I mean, I know you're a family man too, so you've got a busy, busy life outside of the, <laughs> the clinic as well. But tell me a little bit about you and your, your history. Yeah. Okay. So um, I have been practicing for roughly 24 years, uh, going into my 25th, which is exciting. Congratulations. Um, I've always been a very active individual, mm -hmm. and I was raised by some good old traditional German parents who said, you work hard, you play hard eat right, you know, and behave yourself. And that's how they sort of set me up. So <laughs> I've been running that program for quite a while now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're right. Um, I'm happily married and we're into our 27th year no of way. marriage. Nice. Um, we have two beautiful kids who are in university and now in their postgraduate studies, oh, great. Uh, pursuing likely health sciences in some area mm -hmm. within healthcare as well. Um, athletically, I have a lovely and I'm proud of it background of, um, playing soccer um, and, and almost any sport that I had a chance to get my hands on, but I took soccer to a high level and I also took Canadian, you know, you know, American football to a high level. So I played with the University of Saskatchewan Huskies and over the two years that I was part of that team, uh, we went to the Venue Cup uh, two times and we won the Venue Cup. So I have a lovely oh, national exciting. championship behind me. Nice. Uh, and you know, there's a lot of teamwork, mm -hmm. teamwork, teamwork, you see the theme team 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 it's always run you know through me oh, yeah. and, and uh, so that's probably why we're where we're at here in the clinic yeah um, we have 27 I think 27 or possibly 28 members of our team at mm -hmm. Beacon Hill chiropractic yeah. and okay. massage so you can see that's a large expanse of professionals and supportive team members so. sure sure yeah Oh, that's awesome. I like teams. <laughs> I, and a couple weeks ago, if not a couple months ago, I came in and you were in a walking boot. I know that you, oh, yeah. yeah, you had a little bit of an accident on the ski hill. Was yeah, that, that was yeah. one of my passions. So yeah, I so saw I was snowboarding that day. Sure. Uh, I'm first a skier, second a snowboarder. Yeah. I was out snowshoeing for a couple hours yesterday. Sure. Um, just I, I, the, the outdoors is every part uh, of me as as a passion for healthcare. Um, so and that again is espoused in things we talk about and things I encourage our patients to do, yeah. our practice members to do. Sure. Yeah, so uh, very active. In well, talk about the recovery of that. Like what kind of process did you have to go through? Well, like was it a full clean break? Like I'm really curious as to All right. how you yeah. deal with that. Sure, yeah. Uh, well, the uh, the fibula was fractured straight across. Mm -hmm. and it was a very clean break, yeah. not complicated, so it didn't break the skin and the flesh. Um, and luckily it, it lined up after its break reasonably well. Mm -hmm. So after um, an x-ray discovered that it was truly broken and then uh, my lack of pain um, had me thinking and hoping it wasn't fractured. So I did walk on it for a few okay. days, but then uh, the, the best of us, uh, the best of the mind and intellect said, you should x-ray this. Yeah. And sure enough, it was fractured, but cleanly. That's why I could walk on it. So then we went to the walking boot option and um, uh, it took about uh, about eight weeks, seven okay. to eight weeks yeah. in the boot to uh, just secure it and stabilize it enough so that natural healing process could occur. Now, during the healing process, some people don't try to accelerate the process or add anything to it. But due to the compensated walking, I was being adjusted spinal health adjustments practically daily. I was having one to two massages per week oh, wow. to manage the soft tissue inflammation and the guarding of muscles mm -hmm. in area, area, various areas of the body, but around the fracture site. I was seeing our great doctors of acupuncture uh, at least once to twice a week because they were able to stimulate energy to promote a higher healing activity. Mm -hmm. We have laser therapy, which I failed to mention earlier. And laser is one of those few technologies out there of all the technologies that actually does speed up healing and promotes mm -hmm. cell energy. So we were giving that area of fracture laser every day. No um, so uh, where a full break like that might take three or four months yeah. to recover from, and um, you know, that's typical. Um, I was walking in it every day, nice. but I was out of the boot at about six and a half to seven no weeks. Okay. Yeah, wow, yeah, six and a half incredible. to seven weeks. 
Um, yeah, and it's a it's a clean healing. It's a yeah. great recovery. How do you feel now? Well, as with any uh, physical impairment like that, the, the joint and the muscle coordination has to ah, come back a little bit more. It's a little I like to call silly, mm -hmm. um, but things like balance, coordination, proprioception, they're all trainable. Yeah. And so as I submit myself to more of those things and uh, and have been. I'm trusting I'll be back on the snowboard this year. Yeah, and okay. I, I skied already this year now, and it, it didn't fail me, so I'm ready to go. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, I, I want to get into something that's kind of I've been thinking about over the past you know couple of years, and for me specifically, I come in every appointment, and I'm at my desk. I'm at my desk a lot, right? Yeah. Because posture. Posture. I mean, it's yeah. it's a big thing. It's it's people were just kind of. I don't want to say this, but chain to our desks, right? Yeah, so absolutely. I guess, uh, how do you treat that? And I guess, what are some preventative things that people can do for postural concerns? That's really good. Well, um, the buzzword right now in a lot of health science fields, uh, not just chiropractic, but uh, I know a lot of colleagues in physio and, and uh, in orthopedics are starting to pay attention to posture. Mm -hmm. Where chiropractic may have been the champion of this um, as a profession, they're all starting to pay attention because we're now seeing that Im the implication of poor posture is no longer simply pain uh, or disfigurement of our body and our shape, but it is having massive input Im impact on uh, function, on performance, and on neurology. Mm -hmm. So one of the big buzzwords uh, and the buzz areas right now is in neuroscience, they're seeing that a healthy posture or a well-maintained posture provides a very much healthier brain function. Mm -hmm. And this is very exciting. It's taken a lot of work and over a decade for some of our colleagues to work with brain scientists to prove this, but they actually have now done this as well-published literature on that very topic. Um, so how do you treat a poor posture? Well, you have to recognize that habits create so much in our life. And if we allow ourselves without being mindful or aware that posture is even something to consider significant. We'll find ourselves in that slouched position, head down, texting on phones, like a lot of the younger generations are spending far too many hours on, or in the computer work office scenario. And if we submit ourselves to that without interruption, without movement breaks to mm -hmm. awaken our conscious mind and subconscious mind and say, hey, we're not this person, but we're, we're a healthy man or a healthy woman or a healthy child having a sedentary experience. But if we stay in that position, the brain will slowly change the neural image wow. within the brain and it will start to believe that that is actually what we are and who we are. So how do you treat that? Well, we have to interfere that with that sense of self. Um, and, and this is not esoteric the sense of your body's position in space is called proprioception, and that's a self-awareness of body position. And how we wake that system up and introduce healthier posture habits and trends is awareness, movement interruptions, movement breaks, care to areas of the body that may have stiffened and adopted poor posture. So chiropractic is fantastic. Massage is fantastic. Um, regular exercise breaks, um, throughout the day, if that is your case, um, and just uh, basically introducing and reintroducing the motion and the stimulation to the tissue, if the tissue has been sick, through things like massage or chiropractic, to wake that awareness back up. Because mm -hmm. when tissue gets stiff, it gets uh, silent, it doesn't speak to the brain, and the brain's image changes. And mm -hmm. We have a chronic postural problem. Yeah. Often these things start in childhood, and that's why we see a lot of children. Um, if, if someone asked what like, range of ages and demographics that we take care of, we are a family wellness-based center, but we see people of all ages from newborns and days uh, after delivery, uh, all through those infant and toddler years into their pre-adolescent and adolescent years where they're becoming athletes or forming habits good or bad. Yeah. And then of course, all through the ages, and I think our oldest patient's 97 no right way. now. But um, I haven't yet been able to officially say I have a millennial uh, <laughs> who's reached that 100 mark, but I have a few that I'm quite confident we will see that reached Crazy. in the next 10 years. Yeah. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah. yeah. So wellness focused, proactive people seeking guidance and mentoring, 
um, and who wish to be a little accountable to themselves, but partner with a great group of people. And posture is one of the, the mm -hmm. big underpinnings of that wellness, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely, and, and it doesn't, I mean, it's not just you know, your, your musculoskeletal side of it, but it's, it starts to start pulling your muscles and you know, tightening up certain regions and stretching oh, out other injuries too, right? Um, yeah, and this is something I can speak to if you, if you want. Please. Uh, some of the ramifications or negative effects on the wellness of our community is not simply limited to the muscles, bones, and joints. Mm -hmm. um, as early as in the 1950s, autopsies done by medical professionals showed that if a spine had deteriorated or degenerated, and most commonly due to poor posture, they saw severe atrophy in the nerve tissue. Wow. And wherever the fantastic forensic scientists at the time followed those nerve paths too, they found exactly proportionate degeneration in organs and glands. Mm. So the, the whole chiropractic tenant or, or basis has always been well-being throughout internally and externally if the nervous system and the spine are in great shape. And again, this was being proven and seen as back as far as in the 50s with medical forensic autopsy research. Uh, but we've gone on to see that a majority of patients, if they have difficulties in mobility and health in their lower mid spine, they will have digestive challenges, sometimes reproductive function challenges, um, if they have difficulties in their upper mid-back, they can have cardiovascular challenges. Uh, we've seen everything from irregular heartbeats to unusual blood pressure measurements uh, to uh, repeating and um, uh, regurgitation yeah. or GERDS syndrome and reflux. Mm -hmm. um, when we move up into the ears, eyes, nose, and head area and the neck and spine area, it's a very important area for balance and coordination, yeah. for sleep, and it's been correlated from the time that chiropractic first got its license as a primary care profession. Mm -hmm. It was a time of the, uh, the 1918 swo uh, fl uh, swine flu pandemic. And what we found back then is that people who did receive chiropractic care, particularly this area, mm -hmm. seemed to recover from a swine flu epidemic that we found many, many people, uh, or the medical re records show many people died. Uh, there was 60, 70, 80,000 deaths from this. That's wow. not a few. That's a scary, that's scary situation. Yeah. So those are called pandemics. And back at that point in time, the governments of uh, the United States and Canada, Alberta particularly, sure. uh, licensed chiropractors as a primary care profession yeah. to help with the well-being of society and to help support them as chiropractic care did in just functioning well. Yeah. And if that would impact their immune system in a favorable way, or their sleep, or their mood, or their motion, or their occupation, or whatever, the government knew it was a very important mm -hmm. uh, tool to have. So here we are in 2020, yeah. uh, over a century of experience yeah. in the profession, and it's wonderful. I still find, though, that science is still catching up yeah. with um, what we observe day to day. Yeah. Right? I, I'm really curious, too. Um, there's... I don't want to speak for everybody, but there is sometimes a fear of going in and seeing a chiropractor, right? Because sure. grab it onto the head, you're kind of yeah. some some movements you do the jerking movement, right? right. So there's right. a little bit of fear, and, and sure. I think that you've got some tense clients as well when they come in. Oh yeah. Um, so so what other tools and tips or tools and tactics do you use right. to kind of ease that or even just make it to them feel a little bit more comfortable? Absolutely. Um, well, um, if a concern is is safety. Um, chiropractic has a fantastic track record. Um, we may be one of the safest forms of care statistically a person can actually seek uh, in healthcare treatments. Um, if the concern is uh, injury, or uh, uh, if there's certainly, like for an acupuncture patient, some people do not want a needle. Mm -hmm. So what's an acupuncturist to do, yeah. right? As a chiropractic patient or a potential client um, in, in our practice, if hands-on adjustments gives them an ill feeling or they're a little apprehensive, we work with instruments that are light, weight, precise, and can stimulate nerve response and nerve activity without introducing larger scale motion. Yeah. Uh, we do 
muscle uh, therapeutic techniques which can relax compressing muscles and thereby opening up joint motion. Um, but of course, everyone knows that certain tools are more effective for certain jobs. So personally, if I can work gently with people with my hands or some of the most tried and proven effective techniques, I usually have a very uh, comfortable discussion with people and say, don't sell yourself short or don't uh, premeditate yourself away from an option of treatment or care that's very safe, very effective, and it can be delivered very gently. Yeah. Um, so then we talk about it, and if they, at that point, all oh, those people are very comfortable, they'll find a smile on their face before they know it, yeah. and, and they'll be very comfortable with what was just unknown to them. Yeah. I think the fears are more unknowns mm -hmm. as opposed to genuine and justified yeah. concerns for their well-being. Of, of course, and, yeah. and I wanted to go back to the posture thing real quick too. Of course. Um, one of the tools that I'm seeing a lot of, just marketing, right? But the one that it's, it almost looks like a bra. Oh you yeah, the wear, strap. Yeah, 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 you wear it around and it kind of reset. Like, what do you think of that? Do you think yeah, that's often tool? they're referred to as the posture perfectors. Yeah. And uh, it's, a, it's a figure eight shaped strap with some extra cushioning in the areas where the pressure would be the highest. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, um, I've seen a lot of inventions mm -hmm. and creative solutions to what people would say is a common problem. The posture perfectors, um, these are actually a good invention. Mm -hmm. um, I, I have to tell you that most people use them incorrectly though. Okay. Um, so while the inventors and health professionals would tell you, you only wear them for a period of time, a few times a day. Most people will strap them on and hope to keep them on all day long. Um, there can be a consequence to that and you're actually uh, defeating the purpose. Okay. So what those straps do is they uh, stimulate a stretching, they awaken your awareness of a healthier position and posture to maintain and they give you a little help doing that. Okay. But after 15 or 20 minutes, you're supposed to remove the okay. instrument, use the tool for a few resistance exercises and think of it as a lovely break yeah. in holding and maintaining the posture yourself okay and then then you can turn around an hour or two later and use it again as a little bit of a break and a little bit of a reminder and some resistance exercises that come with that tool yeah but don't depend on it I think don't wear it as a crutch yeah. That was that would be a terrible mistake. I think that I mean that's applicable for a lot of industries too, right? Yeah. Like fitness, the same thing. Absolutely. We could look at like wearable technology right now, right? Absolutely. Where people can think that oh, I'm I'm so healthy because my Apple Watch does, and I'm wearing an Apple Watch, but right. you know what I mean? It's like <laughs> my watch is telling me I'm doing so well, but uh, if you're just relying on these kind of tools and devices, right. you, you're kind of missing the yeah. point. Right? That's right. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So that's one invention that I find has been useful but I, I wouldn't depend on it. And when people do get them and even or from us, mm -hmm. I teach them very carefully to use them correctly. Okay, and good. Like, yeah. And one of the, I'm glad that you segued to that. So you guys carry that, but you also carry supplements too. And I'd like to kind of Absolutely. take the right turn there and, sure. and just talk a little bit about supplementation. Um, I think that, um, you know, some people, if they're looking to have that better wellness plan, what are some supplements for the general population right, that right. you would kind of recommend? That's very good. So uh, it's a great question. It's a good topic. For years now, um, I follow and have continued to follow some of the best nutritional coaches and resources from universities all over North America and even some from Europe. Mm -hmm. um, what they have talked about for years is some very serious deficiencies that predominate most of the populations. So your question, what is good for the general population? would fall under this category of what people have been really consistently seen as either insufficient or deficient in. So one of the first things you can probably guess is vitamin D. Yeah. It's one of the least expensive, cost-effective, monotherapeutic tools a person could use. Yeah. And it's inexpensive, and if, as long as the quality is reasonable and most places sell reasonable quality, um, it is very safe to take. Um, not going into much more detail, but we could elaborate if you need to. The next one would be a terrible imbalance in what's called the standard American diet mm -hmm. in providing us, us as, 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 as required adequate essential fatty acids. Yeah. And essential fatty acids 
uh, impact, circulatory function, cognitive mental brain function, fluidity of movement in joints, elasticity in cells and tissues, and healthy nerve activity. Okay. If we are absent in this oil, all of these things can be challenged. So these are the omega-3 families and the omega-6s, but in North America and around uh, Western-influenced cultures around the planet, we're finding that if we do an omega-3, omega-6 ratio test with a blood study, we find that ratio, which should be closer to one to one to one to four, in omega-1 to omega, uh, pardon me, omega-3 to omega-6, mm -hmm. we're finding this ratio is terribly imbalanced. It can be as high as uh, one part omega-3 to 25 what? or 40 parts omega-6. Okay. How does this happen? Yeah. It's refined vegetable oils, oh, which are on mass produced as a byproduct of grain, mm -hmm. and they're used by whom? Food processing, food packaging, and restauranteurs. Yeah. And so because so much food is packaged and processed and not um, consumed in a whole form, general good nutrition practice, we find a serious depletion and that can and will lead to disease that is inflammatory. Wow. So we've hit vitamin D, we've hit omega-3. Yeah. Um, World and, and soil congress meetings from around the planet every two or three years have concluded over the last decade that soil is heavily deplete of micronutrients. Mm -hmm. So I like to throw in there a general multiple mineral and a multiple vitamin okay. tool. Yeah. Um, now, be careful about this, and I would mm -hmm. caution your listeners to this, is that synthetics do not work. Okay. That's why just as early as two months ago, there was a, a published uh, article in the newspaper that said multivitamins don't work. If you, we look at who funded that study, it was actually, um, a pharmaceutical company that pharma uh, funded that study. Uh, and furthermore, the product that they used to test was synthetic. If we use a plant-based, healthy, organically accrued vitamin source and mineral source, those will and can be assimilated okay. by the body and okay. the outcome is far better. Sure. So we want to go with a plant-based source of that sort. Yeah. If you're going to go with a multivitamin. Uh, finally, um, what, what might be something to consider is how the world is um, uh, struggling with inflammation-related diseases. Mm -hmm. And inflammation-related diseases are everything from brain and cognitive dis uh, dementias, yeah. Alzheimer's, yeah. Uh, to cardiovascular diseases like heart disease and cholesterol, atherosclerotic placking, to arthritic conditions and wear and tear degeneration, inflammation mm -hmm. disorders. Yeah. They're, all, they're all related by, the way, by means of inflammation. So there's been a wonderful breakthrough in nutritional science uh, in the last 10 years. And that is a family that, uh, of a nutrients called curcumin longa. Mm -hmm. And its, its mother is the turmeric spice. Mm -hmm. It's that family of spice. But science has found that in turmeric, if they extract that curcumin longa, it has the ability to turn genes in our cells on that help us fight and combat inflammation. Wow. And at the same time, this wonderful activated and optimized curcuma longa will turn off genes that would otherwise potentially express a cancer tendency or potentially express a cardiovascular disease tendency via the inflammation process. Mm -hmm. So once I discovered this, I've been taking this stuff every day yes. without fail even if i'm traveling it doesn't matter yeah. i will not miss a day um, and lovely um, as seen in cultures around the world that do consume this a lot right from cradle to grave mm -hmm. they also have a remarkably lower incidence of those styles of disease okay. so it's a great thing so i would say those would be four of the what are your thoughts on magnesium Oh, magnesium is a, is a master mineral. Or would that go into the multivitamin? That's often would be part of a healthy plant-based, okay. organically sourced multivitamin. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, if you're athletic um, and or you are having a very hard time eating raw or fresh or lightly steamed vegetables, mm -hmm. uh, then you, uh, you may want to add a little extra of the magnesium family mm -hmm. into the uh, into the formula. Now you mentioned having trouble eating veggies and things like that. Do you are you a proponent of greens supplements? Like very a powder much so. or very, yeah. very much yeah. so, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and I'm just gonna be honest with you, I, as a professional uh, who might see patients over a span of 
10 or 12 hours in a day, mm -hmm. um, how do we fit these meals in? Yeah. How do fitness experts who have a, a list of clients throughout the day fit these meals in? Sure. You have to force them in, you have to set the time aside. Yeah. And you teach that wonderfully well. Um, however, if it's less practical, then uh, then a, a supplement would be a, a benefit. Okay. And so um, I try to have my servings of vegetables, um, and the research says somewhere in that range of eight to 10 servings of vegetables and moderate fruit levels, yeah, yeah. especially the darker ones and rich antioxidant ones, would be very helpful for prevention of cancer and these sorts of diseases. Um, but if, if I cannot make seven to 10 servings of the vegetables and fruit throughout the day, yeah. I will augment a smoothie okay. with a high potency, seven to 10 equivalent servings of antioxidants and nutrient that come yeah. from that plant. Sure. And I do not want to miss that yeah. because it is one of the best disease preventing tools we Absolutely. can use. So, yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and like, I think that we should say this too with the, with the supplements too. Supplements don't prevent this, but they can assist, right? It's, That's correct. I mean, it has to start with the whole food, food. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the absolutely. fibers, the yeah. antioxidants, yeah. and nutrients that still haven't even been discovered yeah. in science. They they are profound. Yeah. Uh, a true story, look back to the late 90s, and if you asked someone, a scientist, what are the antioxidants? Mm -hmm. They would list for you uh, vitamin uh, E, beta carotene, mm -hmm. vitamin C, and uh, uh, very few others. Uh, if you now look into what an antioxidant is, and yeah. you want to discuss antioxidants sure. and how many there are, you're in the range of seven to ten thousand oh have been identified. Um, yeah. And they're so minute and uh, obscure, but they're in the whole food. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. They're in the food. Yeah. So no supplement company would ever profess to be able to provide that. Yeah. And in terms of quality of supplements too, you, you mentioned that as well. Like. I, I wouldn't walk into a Walmart per yeah. se and I wouldn't get like the, the generic brand, right? So, so how do you search out good kind of um, quality supplements? Good. Well, uh, it, it requires some research. Mm -hmm. um, you're right in big box stores. Big box stores have large leverage buying power. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they ask manufacturing sites of vitamins, minerals and supplements uh, to offer them uh, a good discounted price yeah. for a large number of bottles which get labeled with their label and they uh, are shipped to all their stores. Mm -hmm. um, when they do that, they're bidding on what is the lowest level of quality control in large vats and quantities of micronutrients, vitamins or supplements or whatever the supplement is that the manufacturer is making. The high quality highly detailed attention um, uh, um, quality nutrients are bid on or ordered by medical grade mm. providers of um, nutrients and supplements. Um, what they do to ensure that the manufacturer they ask to produce that raw material are doing is they use independent uh, quality assurance companies to test that mm. process. Or some of them don't trust outside companies and they do it within house where it's not single, it's not double, but triple certified um, uh, levels of quality assurance and rating. Yeah. Now in Canada, we have something called um, the, um, oh, pardon me, what is it called? Just the, the name escapes me. Um, anyway, it's a stamp of absolute quality insurance. Sure. And the government of Canada did a good thing by instituting that. Mm -hmm. But it still um, is not as high a standard mm -hmm. as some of the highest level supplements and or um, vitamin and mineral manufacturing companies will provide. Yeah. So a triple a GMP, goods manufacturing uh, yeah. uh, product process, pr process yeah. stamp, from American companies, yeah. um, the triple or three level G, that is the highest standard. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, natural product number or NPN number is the Canadian standard, okay. I just okay. remember the name, yeah. um, and they have to go through the process, but that is equivalent to a, a, a single or double GMP standard. Oh, okay. So at least it flushes out companies who completely don't mm -hmm. certify and get external quality yeah. control, but the highest quality is the triple GMP. Um, and these are usually a medical grade uh, product 
that is provided by health professionals because these companies do not sell their product on mm -hmm. the shelves of big box stores. Sure. Um, first of all, they want their professionals to know the product yeah. well enough to educate correctly for when or when not to use the product. Mm -hmm. And you can't find that in a big box store. Yeah. Uh, cashier cannot tell you these things. Yeah. Um, and then secondly, um, they want their reputation to be upheld. So they want it to be used when it's going to have an impact mm -hmm. and not just used uh, willy-nilly, if sure. you would. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's uh, I love that. That's a lot of ton of information. It's a detail. Right? Sorry. It's yeah. good, right? I think that's important, yeah. right? Is, yeah. And um, you know, I, I don't think people should the flushing the money down the toilet. In my opinion, if it's just you know, it's a label on the big box store, and right. you know, they're trying to do it because it sh it's good for me, right? So right. I think that right. people just need to be careful with. Yeah, they need to be careful. And we don't want to we don't want to chastise or. A group all big box stores with all other big box stores. Yeah. I hope to not offend anyone by saying that, but generally speaking, yes, that is the practice of large big box mm -hmm. buying stores. Mm -hmm. They bid on the lowest quality, what remains, and the quality control is not there. So the return of the investment at the buyer's level and consumer's level will be disappointing, mm -hmm. and or potentially uh, lacking the quality assurance. Yeah. You don't want side effects from yeah. your supplements. Absolutely. Right. So you want purity. Yeah. Well, that's important. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just I wanted to take this. You know, it, it's people that are listening to, they train with me. They do Fantastic. either Orange Theory or they'll they'll work with me one on one. Yeah. And some of the training. Very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. But some of the training that they do, uh, specifically, you know, there is some some running and there is some, oh, yeah. you know impact impact yeah. sports and those kinds of things. I guess totally. um, if there is something that people can do at home, right? So if they're experiencing, say, shin splints or right. tight calf muscles right. or you know some hip pain, low back pain, those kinds of totally. things. I guess what are what are some take ways that people can do at home specifically okay. to kind of deal with that. That's great. Um, okay, so if we're dealing with impact and some aches and pains mm -hmm. in a cardiovascular fitness sort of realm, what we want to look at is um, first and foremost mobility. Now mobility issues like a tight ankle is going to lead and predispose that athlete to foot pain, possibly plantar fasciitis, yeah. possibly Achilles tendonitis, yeah. uh, shin splints, possibly patellofemoral pain syndrome, and possibly hip distortion. Mm -hmm. distortion. So for, uh, for example, a home strategy for a runner or someone who's doing that type of intensity of training and frequency of training would be to please guarantee that they work on their mobility mm -hmm. of their ankles and their calf muscles. Yeah. First and foremost, that would be a singular thing I could say. Sure. You know, so, so. Other than that, what availability do they have to equipment at home? Well, generally speaking, maybe not as much as a, a wonderful facility like Orange Theory or any of the big uh, illustrious clubs. So mobility is inexpensive. All you need is a floor, maybe a mat. Yeah. And I want to see and I want to recommend people that they're working on mobility throughout their whole body in symmetry. Because if they're going into something that's repetitive and they lack symmetry yeah. um, and lack mobility, that is going to build up and build up and create a problem of imbalance and wear and tear in a joint. Yeah, compensation. Um, so mo mobility is probably one of the key things. Sure. Um, biomechanical uh, efficiency and, and, and structural alignment is something that we would look for, mm -hmm. uh, but mobility is something we see and we ask our clients, our practice members and patients to work on that. If we connect with great trainers and say, hey, let's link up on this person, after our assessments, we pick up the phone and say, guess what? Trainer, you need to work on this. Yeah. And in your case, Justin, Justin, for Bob, you know, the builder, he needs, you know, blah, blah, blah. Builder. You know, <laughs> that's, what you, yeah. that's what we do. And that's, that's yeah. a great teamwork approach because we can't have and don't have everything here. We, there's amazing trainers in the world. Yeah. You're one of them. So nice. um, that would be a, the first thing. Um, knee mobility and tightness in the thigh yeah. is a major predisposer to knee issues, yeah. knee pain, yeah. um, and weakness in the hip abductors okay. or the side muscles yeah. of the hips that spread and support our legs sideways. Mm -hmm. Those are probably the, 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 the three biggest issues. So sure. some kind of toning and strengthening to the glutes, the lateral abductors, yeah. and a lot of thigh and knee mobility yeah. stretches calf and ankle mobility stretches and you're going to stay clear of a lot of problems just with those simple tools unreal yeah unreal so like ankle mobility would you like i don't know the one thing that i do is i put my toe and i'll just kind of go through 
like a yeah, circumduction yeah, type of yeah, circular yeah. range of motion. Yeah. That's a great one. I really prefer also to work on the degree of how far oh, okay. my ankle can bend yeah. by driving my heel down into the ground mm -hmm. and driving my, my shin and my knee forward. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we call uh, ankle flexion. Mm -hmm. And if that flexion is limited, I see people and they often can't keep their heel on the ground mm -hmm. and squat uh, without falling over yeah. if they keep their heel on the ground because yeah. their knee simply can't move forward. Yes. You know? And while there's differing opinions as to how far to let your knee go forward during weight loaded sure. exercises, yeah. during a simple squat test for functional movement, if that knee can't go in front of the toes, they will be moving abnormally in other parts of their body wow. and invent injury or invite injury. Sure. Um, so that ankle flexion or uh, plantar flexion, dorsiflexion is a very important measurement. Uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So and you would do like a stagger stance, like one foot in front of the other, is that? Or yes, like a lunged stance. Yeah, like a stance. Okay. Yeah. Driving that heel back uh, and drive, making sure that heel stays down on the ground as you increase the lean of your lower leg. Cool. Yeah. And one final question here while sure. I still have you sure. is uh, I, I want to know what your training is like. Well, outside, ah. like what do you do at the gym? I love how, it. how are you staying fit? Okay. Well, uh, this is a great new year, 2020, and um, I have made the commitment to dozens and dozens of patients already to be 30% healthier this year. Okay. Uh, the, my biggest obstacle in the past has been time. Mm -hmm. Now, when have you heard that people don't have enough time exactly. to work out, right? Yeah. Um, but um, my training involves daily walking. Okay. Something that, uh, and that's not it, but that's one of the underlying underpinnings. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things that came out of the World Conference on Spinal Health, which was held in uh, Berlin last year, is they are looking at exercise as a vital sign. And if people are not exercising enough minutes each week, that as a vital sign may predict their longevity and their lifespan more accurately than what would be conventionally done in a physician's office, such as cholesterol levels, blood pressures, wow. and heart rates. Yeah. Exercise as a vital sign. So to wrap that point up quickly, 150 minutes per week okay. is the global agreed upon number of minutes of fast-paced walking yeah. or that equivalent yeah. as a baseline of minimum activity. So what does that 20, look like? It's 25 to 30 20, minutes yeah. in a day. Yeah. So I take my dogs out every single day yeah. for at least a 25 to 30 minute walk. Yeah. But I impose on that once a week a very much more intense cardiovascular sure. experience, like a two and a half hour snowshoe uh, yeah. yesterday, yeah. Uh, a, a four or five hour ski outing uh, just under a week ago, yeah. right? Um, now, three times a week, in each week, I will do resistance training. Okay. I will take some free weights, uh, some very simple uh, equipment, and I will train for resistance. Okay. Um, but out of those three workouts each week, I will do one in a club environment okay. or a gym environment where I have more access to a little bit heavier sure. stuff. Because I don't want all that equipment in our house, yeah. nor could we even fit it in. Exactly. So lighter weights at home on the offer, the, the, the two of the three, one is a little heavier. Yeah. Walking every day as a baseline to get mm -hmm. my exercise as a vital sign requirement achieved. That's 150 yeah. minutes a week. And then mobility and stretching. There isn't a night I don't prepare myself for a good sleep by stretching out, working on mobility, and I even use a foam roller to roll out the spine, the hips, tight muscles from during the day, yeah. that sort of thing. I that is a routine. For sure, and I think that's, I, I mean, HIT, high intensity interval training is very sexy. I mean, it's, but it's not something that you can stay, sustain no, seven days can't. a week, no, 365 days. It's just, especially Absolutely. as we age, as we get older, right? Yeah. It's just our yeah. bodies can't keep up. Yeah. Hit, hit, hit has been a really uh, popular trend. Mm -hmm. um, and sadly, it's been terribly perverted mm -hmm. in its interpretation because a true, true hit by its original definition is 100% effort yeah. for a short period of time. Yeah. And people do classes and they are on a treadmill and they're trying to say they are doing a hit training, but you actually can't hit maximum on some of these apparatuses that people are trying to use. Yeah. Uh, so the best example of a good hit is a, a sprint on a field yeah. and then a walk. Yeah. But what treadmill could I possibly no. run on at top speed yeah. 
um, and then safely control the buttons to lower exactly. the speed and not fall off and have a concussion. Yeah. So, <laughs> so most people will be suboptimal to do what's truly defined as a hit. Yeah. But then further to that, uh, research that I'm very aware of would tell us that as we age, our capacity for hit drops exponentially. Mm -hmm. And anyone over 50 years of age, if you're able to hit more than once a week, I'm actually quite surprised yeah. that you're not overtraining and breaking yourself down too much. Yeah. If you're, you know, be somewhere between, you know, 30 to 50, you might be able to get away with, um, you know, two uh, really, yep. really well. If yep. you're under 30, you could probably get away with three. Of course. But uh, if someone is saying they're hit training more than uh, those numbers after those age oh, ranges, yeah. I would question whether it's actually a real hit workout, of course. or if it's some small perversion of it, yeah. where it misses the real definition. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a very intense uh, training. It does promote growth hormone, and it can help build our supply of uh, muscle uh, enlarged uh, uh, and anti-aging effects. Yeah. But it has to be done very carefully. Of course. Yeah. Not over and, and the way I've started to train like my one-on-one -on -one clients right now is actually to, like a six to ten minute hit session. Yeah. maybe twice or three times per week. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. right? Yeah. Even yeah. once. Yeah. And it's optional, yeah. right? It's, Absolutely. It depends on how they're feeling for that week. If and their age. And their age, yeah. exactly, yeah. right? Very because it, So I, I just think like more than 10 minutes to do like true hit training yeah. is just, it's too it's much. Too much. It's yeah. too much. You'll, you'll hurt the athlete yeah. and they will resent the the workout, of course, which is the, the worst way to kibosh yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm so glad right? you brought up resistance training in your routine specifically because yeah. I think Everybody needs a little bit of some form of resistance training Absolutely. to keep the body, joints, everything, everything Absolutely. healthy. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Schmolke, this was awesome. Absolutely. Thank Justin. you so much for taking time. My I really pleasure. appreciate it. And, My pleasure. Uh, uh, Beacon Hill Chiropractic and Massage. Yeah. Check them out right off Sarcy Trail, yeah. right by the Costco. So. Absolutely. Website, getbetterfaster.ca. Okay. And you're on socials? Social yeah. Media? Absolutely. We're on okay. Twitter, Facebook, um, Instagram. Yeah. Okay. All that jazz? Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Right. Thank Thanks, you sir. so much. Absolutely.